Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, frankly, <clears throat> I have to tell you that um, I am now involved in a project uh, concerning artificial intelligence. It's going to be a book. And uh, <clears throat> I just arrived at the point when this question was uh, raised by me, and I thought that uh, I will share my thoughts with you, of course. But I have to tell you that uh, I am a bit uh, frustrated because uh, the first presenters in the morning session were so outstanding that, and the uh, standard is so high, so probably I will be below. But forgive me this. Um, uh, when I started to think about this uh, problem that uh, artificial intelligence, what uh, role can play <coughs> compared to our to our human intelligence, and uh, will will be ever such a situation that uh, artificial intelligence will replace uh, the human intelligence, then, <clears throat> of course, uh, I arrive to the problem of the human body. I just uh, saw in the in Urania, which is a Hungarian movie, a very good uh, transmission from the London National Theatre about uh, Frankenstein's, uh, Mary Shelley Frankenstein's uh, play, and then I realized that uh, probably <coughs> the first dream to create uh, a body, uh, the, the, the first uh, uh, trial to, to create something which, is, which can be compete, which can compete with living uh, human beings, was this uh, enterprise of Frankenstein's, who created human body, combining several, uh, <coughs> several parts of uh, human bodies uh, in a cemetery. Of course, uh, the result uh, was a very much monster-like appearance, and he really didn't know that how monster-like is he. And of course, uh, getting involved in social life, he just got frustrations and uh, unfulfilled desires. And finally, what he had, uh, what he had to realize, that he is just a mortal, <coughs> mortal being, uh, dominated by that kind of fear of death, which was uh, mentioned by Dan in the morning session. So probably <coughs> when we are thinking about uh, artificial intelligence and, and generally machines, uh, the first point which we have to take into account as a constraint that uh, they don't have body and therefore they don't have those sort of experiences which are uh, constantly uh, coming uh, from our body uh, and arriving in, in our brain and forming uh, our not just uh, uh, <coughs> not just uh, intelligence, but uh, emotions and, uh, and uh, even, I will say, uh, destiny. Kurzweil, who is a major, theor major theorist in the field of artificial intelligence, uh, prophesized about 2050, so that's time when, when humanity will have a crisis, which we have heard, the uh, arrival of singularity. And by singularity, of course, he didn't mean uh, the exact uh, uh, meaning of the word, which is uh, formulated by, by physics and, and mathematics, but by singularity, he, he somehow indicated that this will be uh, the, the age when uh, artificial intelligence and the human brain, so potentials from uh, <clears throat> created artificial intelligence and the potentials hidden in our brain will be somehow merged. And uh, as a result of the merge, uh, of course, the question can be raised that who will be the dominant, uh, dominant part in this alliance between artificial intelligence and natural human intelligence. And there is a chance that perhaps uh, artificial intelligence as a <clears throat> as a part of a, uh, a broader chain of uh, artificial intelligence system, which can be characterized as super intelligence, can dominate uh, human intelligence. Also, there are some other prophecies which, uh, which uh, tell us that uh, the whole brain, as we have heard uh, from, uh, uh, from Thomas' presentation, can be scanned, and as a result of the scan, the brain can be emulated, can be transposed into a, a, a system, uh, information uh, system, which will be operating, but of course without, without the support of the, of the body. So <clears throat> all, this, uh, all this prophecy uh, uh, somehow projects uh, uh, a future which uh, probably can be characterized as an age of immortality, immortality of intelligence, immortality of uh, our uh, intelligence capacities, but still, of course, the question uh, remains open that what does happen with the, with the body? And uh, the body, of course, is something which the real subject of uh, emotions, the real subject of attractions, and uh, the reverse, 
these attractions or or so love and hate this is the this is the space in which uh, human bodies uh, do exist and i really don't think that uh, any artificial intelligence programs will be able to cope with this kind of uh, uh, love and hate uh, problem moreover our life is a is a life embedded in time uh, <clears throat> constrained by uh, by the facts of birth and uh, by the prospects of, of death. So between these two, uh, two points, what does happen probably is, is more than uh, something can be, uh, uh, can be grasped by any programs of artificial, artificial intelligence. So this is probably the main reason why uh, really as uh, uh, Jody indicated, we should uh, say no to the question which was posed in, my, in the title of my presentation. So, a human body is uh, born, and not just born, but they grow. And uh, th when they have grown, they <coughs> fulfill the two, uh, fulfill uh, the command of life, which means they do per uh, they do persist. And of course, as I already indicated, there is a there is a prospect that they will perish. Uh, there is a prospect they will die. But uh, between these two uh, points, uh, the points of birth and points of death. They, they not just persist, but as we have uh, learned from uh, Ursh Satmari, they reproduce. And I think reproduction is a very important function of uh, living bodies, which uh, means information trans transmission to, to the descendants, to the, to the future. In a way, life uh, can be characterized as a power over time. And probably artificial intelligence never will uh, never will be able to to realize uh, uh, this potential. That how to cope with time, not just cope with time, but how to, uh, in a way, uh, 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 win over win over time. So because our life is something which goes on in time and space, and uh, moreover, uh, our life. Uh, is uh, determined by our DNS, which means that we have individual potential. So the body experience, uh, the individual body experience, which is dominated by this life course, uh, accumulates so much, uh, so much information, uh, which uh, probably never will be able to uh, to be translated into the language of uh, artificial intelligence, and probably even there is no need to create such a kind of program. Uh, because the human intelligence is embedded as uh, contrasted with artificial intelligence in body, as I already uh, indicated, and our body as a living body is uh, dominated by needs and uh, embedded in, in the network of other living uh, bodies. Uh, because uh, this body is, is growing, it can be characterize that this is a maturing uh, maturing process which never ends it uh, ends with the death but still will uh, arrive we mature and uh, the needs and desires connected with each other the desires are uh, more than than just needs the desires are projections of future desirable states uh, there is a system of regulation in which human bodies such uh, human bodies uh, uh, must uh, uh, conform. The socialization process is, is, is extremely important and because socialization process can be, uh, how to say, straight and, and deviant, therefore uh, there are many trajectories uh, for uh, growing up a person which never ever will be uh, 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 put into any system of artificial, artificial intelligence. And uh, probably the key point in the whole uh, the whole uh, focus of my thought is what I what I call, according to hunkish terminology, axiological knowledge. Uh, by axiolog axiological knowledge, I, I, I would mean something which I really don't think that any artificial intelligence prog program will be able to to. Uh, uh, to store and 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 uh, and and process. This is the knowledge of values, uh, because the values are such uh, constructions of social reality, which uh, not just uh, which cannot be characterized just uh, information systems. Uh, values are are points of orientation, like good and bad, uh, good and evil, uh, or or beautiful and ugly, useful and and harmful. 
in any other uh, pulse of uh, orientation can be characterized as part of this axiological knowledge, and I really don't see any chance how this knowledge can be uh, transformed into a program of artificial, artificial intelligence. And fear and anxiety, which I already, uh, already uh, mentioned in my comment uh, to Dan's uh, presentation, fear and anxiety, these are basic anthropological states, which are also very distant from the state of artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, language. Well, lang in, in, the, in the field of language, probably the programming process is the most, uh, most uh, developed. And natural language programs are really very much, uh, uh, they, they, they help very much uh, uh, <clears throat> the simulations of human behavior by artificial language. But uh, the language in that sense, uh, as, it, as it is used by artificial intelligence, is just a use of communication. But it's far from being uh, the real uh, function of language, which, which, as Heidegger was uh, characterizing, house of being, a system of construction of the whole reality. And this kind of reality construction function is far from being used by artificial intelligence program. And of course, as I already uh, mentioned, passage of time and death, this is something which is unique, uh, uniquely human. So probably by these reasons, I really do not see uh, any chance that machines will, uh, will love each other, and also machines cannot hate each other. So machines between themselves can be very useful and uh, very helpful for our uh, coping of reality. I really do think that maybe one of the problems which is uh, facing now the whole humankind is climate change. Sometimes uh, uh, our capacity to understand and our <coughs> willingness to, to, uh, to act will be helped and supported by artificial intelligence programs. So maybe uh, they, can, they never will be our, our enemies, but they can be our, our uh, associates. Several types of uh, artificial intelligence can be distinguished. The oracle type, this is the most simple one, which, uh, which just uh, uh, give answers to, to, to our questions. Anyone uh, of you who has uh, Alexa or Google Assistant probably know the advantages of this kind of uh, uh, oracle, uh, <coughs> oracle artificial intelligence program. The, the, gene prob the gene type is a different kind. It does have some autonomy of action and probably in the near future autonomous uh, cars will moving around in Köseng and Zalagerseg in other parts of the country and many other functions uh, which, uh, uh, which can be solved by artificial intelligence on an autonomous uh, way, learning themselves, uh, do uh, belong to this type. The sovereign type, this is, a, this is something which probably, uh, there can be raised some questions that to what degree they will be our allies or will be our, our how this, survey, surveyors. In China, just I read uh, in the lunchtime, in China, uh, 35 minutes is enough to find anyone uh, because the whole, practically the whole country is already covered by, by cameras and they have very good artificial intelligence program of face recognitions. But this time, the BBC reporter was uh, found by the, uh, by the software, so not, not just the common Chinese. The common Chinese face probably does take uh, a longer time to uh, recognize. So uh, anyway, uh, machines uh, in association with each other or separately, uh, all of them are capable for taking care of problems, external, internals, helping us and supporting us. And uh, they do exist in space, but they do not have a sense of time. And uh, moreover, they are standardized. So that kind of integer variation, which is so, which is so basic in our uh, anthropological state, cannot be uh, found among them. They do not have a body, as I already uh, emphasized. And uh, they do, not, they do not have the need for self-maintenance, which is so, so basic uh, experience in our uh, life. Uh, the egoism, uh, which is uh, especially in, in the West, so frequently uh, can be 
uh, can be found among us, uh, absolutely lacking uh, from the uh, from the machines, uh, with a different, uh, no matter what kind of artificial intelligence. Uh, is dominating in them. They do not have consequent aggression, of course they do not have sexuality, and this is probably a basic hindrance that they never will uh, uh, fall in love with each other. And um, they do not have social feelings, they do not have uh, antipathy and sympathy, this love and hate uh, dimension which I already emphasized, completely lacking from them. However, there is a very important point, and this probably is the, the last uh, uh, last remark in this short presentation, and uh, but it's very important that, of course, machines do not love each other, but maybe human beings can love machines, and maybe human beings can uh, can imagine that uh, machines love them, so uh, they can be substitutes of human beings, and this is what I think is very important, uh, very important uh, possibility of the future, uh, because uh, even now and in the future probably more, uh, there are intelligent and sentient human, uh, humanoid robots uh, uh, which uh, uh, existing alongside, uh, alongside these humans. And uh, humans, uh, as you know very well from your experience, do have a lot of problems. And uh, this kind of problems you don't feel, you, you won't uh, find in the case of human robots because they will be programmed in order to avoid conflicts, avoid uh, critical remarks, and uh, avoid uh, any kind of hindrances which are so frequently met in our uh, social encounters. Therefore, probably uh, it will be very easy uh, to, to fall in love uh, in machines, on, uh, by, by human beings, and uh, because of the the ling linguistic uh, uh, natural linguistic programming, they will be able to express uh, emotions, and these emotions can be perceived by human beings as real ones, like in the case uh, dogs or in other in other sort of pets. So this uh, in th that uh, uh, that kind of Pygmalion relationship, I really do think that uh, machines. Uh, will have a very important role in our, in our emotional life. Uh, even they will be able to uh, communicate with us uh, on the plane of metacommunication. And of course, uh, the speech algorithm even now uh, enable them to, uh, to express uh, several uh, emotions. And they will be able to uh, express joy, satisfaction, contentment, disappointment, sadness, feeling, feeling sorry, everything which uh, another human being is able. Therefore, uh, I do really think that uh, maybe machines won't love each other, never, but uh, because of, uh, because of uh, the simulation of human behavior, uh, robots uh, uh, directed by artificial intelligence will be able to dece deceive human beings. And uh, as we have uh, known already, human beings uh, can be characterized such a, uh, such a uh, curious uh, creatures who have the tendency to be deceived, have the tendency to be even stupid, uh, to be, how to say, misled. And, uh, we are not complete, not complete uh, from the perspective of our emotional and 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 uh, cognitive setup, and these uh, leaks in our setups probably will be fulfilled by machines led by artificial intelligence, and then maybe singularity never will happen, but a new kind of uh, new kind of society in which uh, machines and human uh, beings. Uh, coexist with each other, this is, a, this is a vision which is not so far from the present. So this was my short presentation. Thank you very much for the attention. <laughs>